Hi guys, this is iBlog TV. My name is Dushan. I'm really honored to present you my guest, Mr. Larry Zenger. Uh, Larry, hi, by the way. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? Fine. So, uh, Larry, we met a few weeks ago on Malta. We had a chat there. And you mentioned during the chat that you were you are the co-founder of Wikipedia and you even invented the brand name Wikipedia that all the world know today. Is it true? Oh, it's true. Yeah, I, I'm, I remember making the list of all the different options and then just Wikipedia just seemed like the obvious choice. So. Cool. cool. And uh, you just had a presentation. I really enjoyed it. So you're here and on Malta you are also presenting your new project, which is Everypedia. Let's say it's a better self of Wikipedia. Uh, because it's based on the blockchain, and uh, is Everypedia every a new killer app or killer dApp? Well, we think so, obviously. Um, uh, it, it will be. We will be launching in uh, a, a, a few weeks a brand new system. I, I should clarify that um, I'm not actually co-founder of, of um, Everypedia. Um, the guys, when they were just getting it started, they, they approached me, um, and, and I, I wanted to see more traction before I get invo got involved. And eventually, they got it, and they decided to move to the blockchain. That's why I got involved, because what I think really needs to exist is not just a, a single encyclopedia, but an entire decentralized encyclopedia network that has um, reliable rating systems built in. And uh, I think that is uh, is ultimately going to be the, the killer dap. But but before we get there, we're, we're going to create, uh, well, we will launch, we already have created um, like 95% there, a, a, a brand new system that will make it as easy to edit an encyclopedia article as to edit a Medium article or WordPress under their new design. So it's... Um, and it's got uh, it's built on React, so it's very responsive. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, social media type features built in, so you can follow people. You, there will be messages that pop up and 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 so forth. So it's also kind of social media, right? Um, yeah, but it's still an encyclopedia, sure. right? Uh, and and uh, it, it'll be a lot easier to chat with people um, uh, with real-time chat uh, built in. Uh, it will look and work very well on your phone. Um, so, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. And, and what are really the main advantages? Why have you decided to use blockchain? And what is the role of the token? Right. So... Uh, it really doesn't have to do with the design of our particular website, right? Um, that's, uh, so uh, there's a few different reasons. Um, so first of all, it incentivizes um, work on uh, free encyclopedia articles, which is something that ought to be incentivized, right? Uh, there's been billions of, of dollars of value created by Wikipedians. And yet, those people haven't got any benefit. They ha they have the the uh, the joy of knowing that they have helped the world, and I suppose that's something. Um, but uh, it's actually been Google as much as anything that have really profited from from um, Wikipedia. Um, and also, uh, it it uh, provides for a, a governance structure for the network as a whole. I'm I'm referring to the Everpedia network. Um, as you create new articles and contribute new articles, you actually um, uh, uh, mine tokens um, for yourself. And then uh, those tokens can be used to vote on new smart contracts. We've already had such a vote. Um, and you can also make decisions about um, new articles contributed to the system. Um, that's That doesn't slow down the system at all. Everything still happens in real time the way that it does on Wikipedia, even faster, arguably. And, so. and here is a question, for example, and you were during your presentation, I really like the, you know, the idea that you shared that basically the dApps today are not really user friendly. Yeah. And what about Everypedia and the token holders? I mean, do they need to know anything about the tokens or everything will be in the back end? 
That's correct. Um, everything is going to be more uh, in the background. Um, so uh, on the relaunched site, so at, at the present moment in, in um, mid-June, um, we uh, haven't re relaunched. But um, when it, it goes live, then it will be possible. Um, I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm going to have to restart my answer. Um, uh, so, uh, so just so, yeah. So the question was basically uh, the user experience. You know, so if we want that every pedia will be massively adopted, mm -hmm. you know, because hundreds of millions of billions of people didn't know about the tokens, right? They don't know how to open the wallet. They don't know what you know what to do to, what to do with that. Yeah. So for the I mean ordinary user, yeah. does he need to be like? Technology savvy or token, you know, whatever knowledge savvy, in order to, to you know, to use the platform, or everything is somewhere in, as you said, in the background. Yeah, I, I think that's a problem um, with a lot of DApps. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so exactly. basically, you need to. Yeah, this is exactly what you mentioned during the presentation: user experience. Yeah, exactly. You need to own some token already. Yeah. You need to know how to use a wallet, um, or um, uh, the the app is just not very well designed because not a lot of attention was given to that. Um, it's uh, everything's a bit rough around the edges and not uh, and. and Ultimately, um, most of your potential users don't know about blockchain, exactly. right? So it's not a huge advantage from their point of view um, that it is uh, on the blockchain, right? Uh, so how are you solving this challenge, for example? By simply making a better a better app from uh, a you know. Uh, just put aside all the blockchain stuff. Sure. Um, simply try to outcompete the, the competition um, by doing what they do better, mm -hmm. or or uh, solving a new problem. It's entre entrepreneurship 101, sure. right? It's if you if you don't have that stuff covered, um, mm -hmm. you can't just assume that tokenizing is such a huge advantage that it's going to give you a competitive advantage because it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the bottom line. So where is Everypedia today in terms of users or uh, content creators? And where you think it's going to be in five years from now? Right now, uh, I believe we have something like eight, 18,000 contributors uh, or accounts made. Um, right now, we're uh, in a lull between um, the previous system and, and the, the new one. The, the new one. Um, I can't tell you how many we're going to uh, launch with, because I don't know, do I? Um, well, there's over 150,000 EOS token holders um, who were the recipients of our airdrop last um, June. And and uh, we think a fair number of those people are going to at least check us out. And, and um, I'm looking forward to being able to give lots of speeches um, to, to promote uh, the, the general idea of Wikipedia 2.0. We're, we're um, giving you a chance to work on those articles that you were never really able to work on um, on Wikipedia. So what would be your like desire or wish in five years from now? Now you have 18,000 contributors. So in five years from now, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I, we want millions of contributors. Uh, we want, and Way not just and millions of accounts. We want millions of active contributors in many languages. The last time I remember, you mentioned me that you have many, many languages already. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, yes, we do, we do. Um, we've, uh, we're already an an international company. Uh, the the CEO is Swedish, and he has an office with uh, several people in, uh, in Stockholm. Um, most of our development team is uh, based out of, out of near Santa Monica. I myself am in Ohio. Um, and we've got some other people in other places too. Actually, we've got um, a, a a group of people in South Korea and in China um, that are organizing the the projects there. In terms of the actual languages that we support, it's it's a few dozen. Um, I can't I can't list them all off for you right off the top of my head, but there's there's quite a few. We've 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 forked it, and we're going to support more as as uh, time goes on. You mentioned during your speech that you would like that all encyclopedia would be basically on in 
with I mean in every pedia I don't know in what time frame so can you can we say that in 10 years from now 15 years from now every pedia would be the main center of knowledge of the world well let's put it this way um, I think there will exist um, a network call it the encyclopedia layer of the internet that um, will, if not include, it will have pointers to all the encyclopedia articles in the world. I mean, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people who will simply refuse to put their encyclopedia articles in IPFS or on the blockchain, right? Um, but nevertheless, I, I want those articles, regardless of where they're hosted, to be um, to be recorded and rated, and or up at least available for rating, um, so that we create a, a sort of knowledge um, competition to write the very best article about every single topic and from every single point of view. Um, and it is going to require a decentralized network in order to motivate people to get together. There's no single organization that could win the trust of enough people. So it has to be a neutral technical protocol, as I say, just like um, there is uh, the blogosphere, which is defined by RSS. Well, we need to have an encyclopedia sphere um, that is defined by the smart contracts of, of uh, Everpedia and also by content standards uh, that that are generally agreed upon by by everyone it would rule out things like copyright violation and, and whatnot um, so uh, just a very low bar in, in other words for, for being included so um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I have a question now. We have a section now, a new section, tip of the day. And related tips to let's say not not only crypto traders but also people that would like to buy maybe crypto for the first time. Uh, what would your tip be to those people? Um if you're not a sophisticated investor and you're not really willing to do the research that it takes you shouldn't even buy crypto, in my opinion, because it's very, very, very risky, right? Um, it's going to be volatile for the next several years at least. Um, but uh, if you are willing to do the research, then that's the place to start. You just need to start educating yourself about how it works, all the concepts that are involved. Um, and it's really interesting. It's not a it's not a bad use of your time. You'll learn a lot. That was exactly my next question. Yeah. Would you suggest that people would spend time on the research and then deciding to, you know, go into it? So it's worldwide spending the time for research, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because, I mean, it it'll teach you about all sorts of concepts. Uh, that are applicable in other areas or that draw on a variety of areas, finance, law, computer science, of course, mostly computer science, um, networking, and and uh, all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, the more of that stuff you know, the more you will actually understand um, how the modern world as it is developing now really works. I mean, like, for example, I didn't really appreciate the, the uh, you know, the joys and wonders of zero knowledge encryption until after I had gotten into a blockchain and then understood, um, yeah, there can be cloud computing where the uh, the data is not actually readable by the people who are holding the data on their service, on their servers, and that's like a, that's a pretty cool thing, and it's it's a similar concept to the blockchain. It's not the same, but um, it just immediately appealed to me then. Like this is okay, not totally re relevant, but I'm just illustrating my point. I, I uh, got rid of, of uh, Dropbox. I just don't use Dropbox anymore. I used to use it as my main source, but the problem is that um, the, the data is stored in readable formats uh, and your stuff could be examined by Dropbox employees and whoever uh, you know hacks into Dropbox, which is not acceptable to me, right? That's just totally insecure and it's not private. Um, so, so uh, you know, we need to learn a lot more about um, cri cryptography, about um, encryption, and so forth, and uh, 
you know, just as, as you learn more about those concepts, it'll be easier to understand what's going on with, with um, cryptocurrencies. And the second tip, you're an entrepreneur and you mentioned entrepreneurship. What would you suggest to young entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs entering the market? Can it be tech or fintech or the blockchain? What would be the tip for them? I guess I'll just say what I usually say in answer to that question, which is that um, uh, not enough people talk about the importance of just thinking your idea through. Um, I think there's a, a, what a lot of, of uh, advisors to to startups say is you should make a lot of uh, cheap, um, quick tests, and and uh, my problem with that advice is that a lot of times um, if you don't think through the problem that you're trying to solve um, in advance uh, you you might not be testing the right thing and creating a new business is a lot like it's like writing a book almost. There's systematic thinking that goes into it. There's so many different aspects of it and it all has to hang together. So it's like writing a philosophical system. This is why people who are in the humanities in philosophy especially and mathematics end up doing reasonably well in, in, uh, as, as entrepreneurs because they're trained to think this way. Um, and so that, I guess that's what I'm saying. You need to like make a list of all the questions that you have and just start thinking them through, writing them uh, about them, getting advice about each of them. And, and uh, I'm not saying that you should not do any market research. Uh, you shouldn't make uh, cheap, fast tests. Um, absolutely, you should do all of that. Um, I'm a big believer in, in lean startup philosophy, so check that out for sure. But there's like just the, the the hard mental work that hap has to happen first. I mean, if you go to like a hackathon, for example, and and um, a, a bunch of people uh, ask you hard questions, basic questions about what you're working on, right? Um, you have to have all answers to all of those questions in advance, right? And not just because they're going to embarrass you if you don't know the answer, but because reality will embarrass you when you discover that you have no good answers to some um, basic questions. So, yeah. Cool. That was really valuable. Thanks a lot, Mr. Larry. I'm really glad that you were my guest. For the last question, would you like to send any message? I know that you are like maybe aligned again with your ex-co-founder -co partner from Wikipedia. Any message for him? Oh, well, no, not really. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I'll, I'll, I will say one thing. I'm surprised that he's not on board with blockchain, um, frankly. Um, he wasn't really on board with wikis uh, and, and you know, the, the idea of Wikipedia in the first few weeks. Um, it, it took some convincing there. So maybe it's the same sort of phenomenon. It's, it is a little bit strange to me that, that because, look, it is just... So blockchain is basically like free open source software, but with financial incentives that are built in. Um, it, has, it, it basically uses a lot of the same concepts as, as uh, the open source software movement, right? Um, it's all decentralized and distributed. It often is based on uh, uh, open source software. You know, nobody wants to build on your uh, on your token if it isn't open source software, um, and uh, it it allows um, you, you know uh, participation um, by users um, as and when they want to. You know? But then the question is, if he adopts, for example, blockchain technology in, in Wikipedia, then it will make, I mean, can make a difficult times for every Pedia or not? Well, we'll see what happens then. <laughs> I, it's, not up to, it's not up to him, for sure. Um, uh, he, he's been overruled by his community a lot. And um, the Wikipedia community tends to be very uh, institutionally conservative. Um, so, because it's 100% self-selected participatory uh, community, 
What that means is that people who don't like how things are being run tend to just go away and stop caring about Wikipedia. And the people who like the present system stick with Wikipedia. And the people who have uh, you know, power and authority in the system will try to shore up their power and authority by supporting the current system, whatever it is. Um, and I'll tell you, moving to the blockchain would change a lot of the dynamics of Wikipedia. And so I think that's really one of the main reasons why um, it will be difficult, not impossible, of course, but difficult for, for Wikipedians to agree to move.